Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my shop. get back on this 75 Corvette and the uh, project that I started many moons ago in replacing that timing chain. Now I'm trying to put everything back together that I had to take apart in order to get to it. So stay tuned and let's get busy. All right. I guess I'm going to start this off with a disclaimer. There will be no money shot of the uh, radiator and shroud getting installed. <laughs> I got, uh, I determined I was able to actually install the radiator by myself and, uh, and, I, and take it out. Because once I got it in, I started trying to get the shroud in and uh, I was unsuccessful. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to... Uh, Enlist the help of Brother Carl when he gets off work this evening. Well, last evening. And uh, we'll get this, uh, we'll both of us manhandle that thing in. All right. So I was able to get it back out. Now, to get it in, you got to kind of go in, lift it at an angle like this. And there's just enough clearance at this side to drop it down and get it in. And it sits right in them, uh, the uh, mounts down here at the bottom. No problem. The problem is the shroud. That is the problem. So, now I measured it from the tip of this bumper, this front plastic piece, to the engine is four feet. Four feet. All right? You would think with four feet, you would be able to have an easier go and get this radiator in and out. I've replaced I don't know how many radiators in I don't know how many different types of vehicles. And I've got to say, this, of course, I've not worked on a whole lot of new stuff. So maybe that's it. I'm talking about kind of older stuff. And this is, this is it. This is about the worst. Four feet between the front end of this thing to the engine. And, a, and you got to shoehorn something in the front end. That's an amazing thing. So anyway... We got it in, so you put the radiator in first, then you put the shroud in. And I did leave the uh, water pump off, and that did kind of help for clearance and without the fear of gouging.
That one just wouldn't. I didn't think it was long enough, so I'm paranoid about going too much more with him. Okay. reason why I want to put the hoses on now before I do the alternator or fan or even the other part of the shroud is I want to pressure test the uh, system. Uh, I'm not going to put any fluid in it until I see it uh, pass that. The cap says 16 pounds. So what I'm going to do, instead of going to 16, I may try something a little lower first then go from there. Let's see, that's too big. I haven't used this dude in a long time. Hmm. 
There's 10. 10 PSI. Feared. Many, many years ago, I purchased a radiator pressure tester. Uh, I did a lot of, uh, I wasn't a mechanic by trade at that time, but I did a lot of uh, shade tree work for folks. And, uh, well, I decided before I go out and put that expensive antifreeze in this thing or fill it with water and then have to drain it, Let's hook up my pressure tester and uh, pump it up to, uh, oh, let's say 10 PSI, see what happens. Now, my radiator cap says it's 16 PSI, so I figure, well, 10's a good, uh, well, 10's a good mark to start with, uh, and then I'd go up higher if it would hold. It's not holding. Matter of fact, uh, one... Two, three, maybe four. <laughs> oh, me, yes. Definitely three leaks, possibly four. None of them in the section that they've repaired. One is where it connects up to the uh, upper, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call that, reservoir perhaps, the upper portion of the radiator. So, one of them, I, if it was just this one, I would attempt to solder that thing myself. But, one's here. Well, that morning told me my battery was going dead. But anyway, look at them tiny bubbles, tiny bubbles. And that's where it connects up there at the upper uh, uh, section of the radiator. Uh, let me get a light. There's number two, right there. Okay. Let me see. Am I seeing uh, nothing there? Okay. And where's number three? Number three down there in that corner. You see that? There's three. Okay. And there in that corner, I see a white, but I'm, it's not bubbling. I don't know if that's just from where I sprayed down there. So definitely three leaks. You know, the radiator shop said they pressure tested it. Uh, be right back. What was I saying? Oh, the radiator shop. Let's see. I put it up to 10 PSI. It's down to, uh, oh, looks like about 7. So it's dropping. Radiator shop said it pressure tested it. And I'm looking at that place right there. There's no way I could have damaged that or that up top. It's possible I did this one, putting it in. But those two I didn't. So I'm going to kind of question whether or not they did actually pressure test it, even though it looks good when you look down the pour. Uh, I'm not going to throw any more money at it. 
just going to have to replace it, it looks like. I was afraid of that. I, I just knew that that radiator, the way it goes in and out, that it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to get damaged. So hopefully the new replacement radiator, when I, I'm going to order a three-row aluminum, like I said, it's a shame because I had no problem whatsoever with this cooling system before this uh, episode. And had I done my homework correctly, I could have done, I could have got that uh, shroud out without pulling the radiator and I would have saved myself a whole lot of problems. But then again, putting that shroud in and out, it does rub. So anyway, well, that's where we're at. Uh, I'm going to have to put another radiator in this dude. I'll tell you. Fun, fun, fun until my daddy took the T-Bird away. And I never had a T-Bird.